So welcome. Today we're checking in with vestibular expert and VEDA uh, medical advisor, Dr. Michael Schubert about vestibular rehabilitation therapy. Um, it's a customized form of PT and for many types of disorders that cause dizziness and imbalance. So first I want to introduce myself. My name is Rochelle Lozon. I'm a student of physical therapy at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. I was once a PT um, patient. I have two vestibular disorders. I've suffered from vertigo since I was 10 years old and I met Dr. Schubert probably about six or seven years ago now, something like that. And I was first a patient, and now um, I'm a student to become a vestibular therapist myself. So um, I'm in a little bit of a unique position here. I'm looking forward to being able to learn from Dr. Schubert both from the patient side and as I go into clinical practice. Well, it's an honor to be here. It's good to yeah. see you again. I remember seeing you in clinic and, and um, you know, the presentation of, of your signs and symptoms are not that uncommon. And a lot of folks, you know, it takes a long time before they get to see somebody that kind of kind of steer them in the right direction. So mm -hmm. you need a lot more education in vestibular, not only rehab, but just physiology and how the system works to educate the public. Right. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so uh, as Rochelle said, my name is Michael. I started off uh, doing physical therapy, uh, actually in the Pacific Northwest. And at that time I was uh, exposed to something called positional vertigo. And I remember thinking, wow, that's really interesting. The eyes move when the ears don't work well. And that sort of started me on this journey to understand the physiology better. So I started off as a physical therapist. I went back to graduate school to obtain a PhD and now I do research mostly. I am in clinic one day a week. I'm at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. I have a laboratory where we're interested in learning about better uh, strategies to treat various forms of disorders that affect the vestibular system and cause the various signs and symptoms uh, related to having that mm -hmm. uh, problem. Nice. Um, so the first question that we have for you is a lot of people think of PT as, you know, you've torn your ACL, you break your ankle, you hurt a bone, and then you go see a PT and you get better. There is vestibular PT. So can you describe a little bit about what vestibular rehabilitation is? Yeah, vestibular rehabilitation or vestibular physical therapy is a unique form of, of physical therapy that focus on, focuses on treating the signs and the symptoms of having a problem that causes dizziness or balance. Uh, it's a type of training that the physical therapists have to get outside of their regular um, doctoral training program. That is, it's not does it's currently not required curriculum for PT schools. And so those physical therapists that specialize in and have to get the training on their own outside of what they generally learn as part of their curriculum. And it primarily focuses, uh, it involves a good understanding of vestibular physiology, oculomotor or eye movement control, and then patterns of symptoms that present uniquely. And it requires this unique training and it kind of focuses on treating dizziness and treating balance explicitly, regardless of what the, the symptoms may be coming from or what the diagnosis is. Mm -hmm. um, so with vestibular rehabilitation, um, also known as VRT, so vestibular rehab therapy, um, situation and gaze stabilization, they're often part of VRT programs. So can you explain how these help retrain the brain when our vestibular system isn't working well? That's right. So habituation and gaze stability really are two unique subtypes of vestibular rehabilitation. Those are two forms of rehab. And a way to think of, of them is uh, that habituation is somewhat of an exposure therapy. That is, the, the, the physical therapist will identify what particular mo movement, either physical, you know, body movement, or perhaps exposure to visual stimulation. A lot, of, a lot of our patients have visual motion symptoms. That is, they can be completely still 
viewing a busy visual background and feel dizzy or feel some sort of symptom related to that that's unpleasant. So habituation therapy is a form of exposure therapy where the physical therapist identifies what are the particular triggers or particular environments, motions, again, physical or, or visual, that create a symptom and then develops an exercise program to repeatedly expose that person to that provocative uh, exercise or environment, behavior, etc., with the idea that the brain will learn to become desensitized to it. And it does work. There's an entire literature on this. There's a lot of neural, uh, neural uh, physiologic evidence for this idea of habituation and the nervous system doesn't respond as much to provocation when it's, in, when it's continually provoked. So that's kind of been lifted and brought into the clinic. And that's what habituation is. So it's a form of exposure therapy involving symptoms that are repeated. Mm -hmm. uh, adaptation or gay stability, gay stability exercises were originally designed with the thought that we're going to train the broken reflex that's associated with the eye and the ear. And that reflex keeps your eyeball still during head movement. And these are exercises where we look at targets, we turn our head, uh, side to side or up or down, or we move our eyes between different targets and involve a head rotation. And those are exercises that are designed to help improve your ability to see clearly during a head movement, which is a function of having a lesion to the uh, vestibular system. If that system doesn't work, then you might not see clearly during head motion. And that's what those exercises are designed to do, help you see more clearly during a head movement. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot uh, from fellow vesties or vestibular patients that, um, yes, we have the name, um, that it's habituation is like, it's the hardest part of doing vestibular therapy because it forces you to feel dizzy. It's difficult. I have a lot of patients that don't want to do it or they do it once and they give up. And it's one of those things that I really... I just want to encourage people to push through it. It really does work. Um, I've seen it myself. And it's very it's a, an important part of the rehabilitation process. I, I think that's a good point, Rochelle. The physical therapists need to be you know, careful. You know, it does happen sometimes where, the, where they are too aggressive. And sometimes the, the progression for these patients that are exquisitely sensitive to motion they uh similarly uh it turns out they often sometimes are very sensitive to medication mm -hmm. so from a from a physician standpoint they often are prescribed medication with micro doses that's very important to get them over their dizziness the same thing with physical therapy they need to be sometimes you know progressed very slowly the exercises started off um at, at a really reduced and and cautious level so the physical therapists that have been doing this for some while appreciate appreciate that. So it is good to know to note that while the patients do need to experience this unpleasantness to get better, it does need to be moderated and incremented in a way that they can actually tolerate. And that's important for the for the physios, the physical therapists to, mm -hmm. to acknowledge. Um, coming from my learning to be a clinician side, if I could ask you this, um, I know we go to the doctors a lot. We use that um, perceived rate of exertion. We want to know how bad a, a patient is feeling. So when you're doing VRT with a patient and zero being no pain or no um, discomfort, 10 being absolutely dizzy, cannot do anything else, awful, uh, what would you say you would recommend that a patient feel when they're going through VRT. How uncomfortable is a good amount of uncomfortable so it's not overstimulating? This is a great question. And as a scientist, this always makes me a little bit nervous to talk about this because we don't have a lot of information about dosing in rehabilitation. And as you get out and start practicing, Rochelle, and you stay in the area, I'm going to try to bring you into my lab and you can help <laughs> us figure this out. Okay. But uh, <laughs> Professor Susan Whitney and her team at Pittsburgh have begun to try to crack this a little bit by creating a basically a rate of perceived exertion, the Borg scale, like you mentioned, sort of the one that's known in cardiovascular training for balance therapy and dizziness therapy. And it turns out that what what 
without knowing an exact number, we need to be kind of on this moderate, low to moderate level. So if you say zero to 10, 10 is the worst. I can't function I'm terribly dizzy and off balance and zero is, is no balance. Probably three to five range is where we need to be in for the subjective experience uh, to, be, uh, to be experienced during the exercise and then they need a recovery period. So you need to go into that three to five level and then we need to recover. And we need to go back into that three to five level and recover. So this is a repeated phenomenon, brief, but multiple times per day. And I think that's where we're gonna find the, the right dosing is gonna be, you know, different from cardiovascular or strength training where you might expect people to go to the gym and do 60 minutes more. Mm -hmm. Cardiovascular and musculoskeletal training all at once. Not the same with vestibular I'm probably looking at multiple exposures, but brief. So by the end of the day, maybe you have 20, 30 minutes built up, but your, your, your incremental exposure is maybe five to six or seven minutes. Okay. I think that's where, that's where we're going to find is the most effective. Interesting. Thank you. So you spoke a little earlier about gait stability. And I know you mentioned training and I, I know this from like when I had to do the walking while turning your head and whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about those balance retraining exercises? What, what can people expect when they're doing BRT? I think the most critical thing with balance exercises is that the patient has to be prescribed an exercise that is challenging, but they can do successfully. And that is up to the physical therapist to figure out what can I prescribe that you are going to be able to do safely at home, but is going to make you wobble. And what I like to tell my patients in clinic is you ought to look terrible doing this, but you should be able to do it. That is, you can do it comfortably. You might look terrible, but you ought to be able to do it. And so that window where patients are struggling, but they can do it. That's really the key. To doing it and similar to the habituation example that you brought up these exercises should be challenging they don't work if you if you don't wobble okay so it's okay. that same idea you got to struggle a little bit but creating that with that window where we struggle a little bit but we're safe that's the key i think okay with vrt i know a lot of patients uh fellow patients that i've talked to I mean, when you feel bad, you don't want to feel bad anymore. You want to feel better, but this is a process. So I guess someone can say, how long will it take for me to get better? And I know that that's a very open question, but can you maybe go into a little bit of what to expect? Like how long should a given patient or on I know, average is a, a very, yeah, you're going to make me itch and get nervous again and scratch. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I, we do know some of these answers. So, of course, it does depend on the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So, for patients that have something called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or BPPV, we expect that to resolve in the moment they're treated or certainly within days of the appropriate treatment. Now that's an accurate diagnosis, correctly identified, et cetera, but that gets better quite rapidly. Now, what you're really asking about, I think more is the more chronic conditions. B positional vertigo or BPPV can be chronic, but nerve damage. So the vestibular system is not working. Migraine. Um, some of these other diagnoses, Meniere's disease that, that are episodic. It, uh, the, the recovery times do vary. So if we have a unilateral vestibular nerve weakness, so balanced nerve doesn't work in one ear, you start physical therapy, we expect you to be better within a four to six week period, somewhere on the order subjectively of 50 to 60, maybe 75% subjective. But I will tell you that we do research on these folks. We bring them back a year later and they will say things like, thank you very much for your rehab. It was helpful, but it really wasn't until a year had passed that I got back into my life, started living again. So there's different time courses to recovery. So I think you make an early quick recovery and unilateral loss four to six weeks, and then it slows down and continue to recover after that. In mm -hmm. both ears, bilateral vestibular hypofunction. Thankfully, that's less common, but we do have people in our 
in the public that have that, and that is double. That's about 10 to 12 weeks and is often one to two years before they really feel a lot better. And then migraine and some of these other conditions uh, sometimes can take up to a year to really get managed. Not all the time, but a lot of those more difficult causes for chronic dizziness and imbalance may involve um, you know, behavioral modifications such as avoiding certain foods. It takes a long time to, to identify food triggers, mm -hmm. sleep patterns, et cetera. And so it can be a more comprehensive approach, not just physical therapy, PT is mm -hmm. a part of it. So it does vary, but we're getting a handle. We do have some expectations for, uh, for recovery based on diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of recovery as well, when you are dizzy, when you're a vestibular patient and you have vertigo, it's very difficult to deal with psychologically. It's, it creates fear. It creates fear of doing certain movements, different activities. So I know in my journey, when I initially had PT and had VRT, had behavior modifications, like you said, because I do have vestibular migraines and had to identify my trigger foods. It took a few months to get those initially done, but then I had another year of just relearning not to be scared of doing certain things. And it's, it's a process. It's a great point. You know, physically you look okay. These mm -hmm. patients look fine. They've got their hair. They're not green, which sometimes happens with cancer. I'm joking a little bit, but you know, they look, they don't look ill. They're not wearing a cast. And so there's a psychological overlay, like, wow, I'm never gonna, people don't understand it. Am I ever gonna get better? And that takes time to get over too. Gradually confidence will improve. Then you start to move more. So you can see how it, it, it can take time to recover uh, from, from these disorders and also they're episodic. A lot of these are, you know, we, they're not one and done. Migraine doesn't go away generally. It does change. It does tend to get better as we get older, but it, it's years that people suffer with this and the episodes still come back. And so yes, people get better and they learn to live with it, but it's not like a fracture that heals and we recover and then we're done with. It, right. can, it can be lingering. Right. I think it's important to um, like you said before, just have a comprehensive look at recovery. Um, for me personally, seeing a therapist as well, just to address the fears that I had and recovering from working past the, the fears that I had, it was really, really important to be able to, when I do have vertigo now, when I do have a vertigo attack, which thankfully is very rare, I know how to handle it mentally better, where before I would just panic and now it's different. So that's an important part of the healing process too, I think. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. So the final question that we have for you, um, how do you find a qualified vestibular therapist? Yeah. So, uh, you know, in my clinic, every time I'm in clinic, I use this resource and now it's the Vestibular Disorders Association resource. They have a link, healthcare professionals, and that lists both physicians and physical therapist. It's important to have a good physician on board too. Oftentimes the physical therapist is the first provider because they, there's more physical therapists that know how to do the ocular motor exam and they begin to be the ones that kind of uh, oftentimes will signal to the physician the need for a physician visit. So that, that resource is fantastic. There's one other and that's the Academy of Neurologic Physical Therapy has a list of PTs and a map a physical map of the U.S. and where these PTs are that do vestibular rehab. So I think those two resources are excellent for the public to find help. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been wonderful uh, talking with you and learning a little bit more myself and also hopefully giving people a little bit more information on um, how to approach vestibular rehab therapy and what it entails. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you again. Stay in touch. Good luck with your studies. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.